G'day, Simo and Ed, back for another episode of the Fast Line Track Growth Show, where we talk all things karting and business. So, Ed, we've got a hard task ahead of ourselves today, because we've got to sack someone. Yeah, I think, so our viewing figures are going to go right down now, because seven days ago, uh, we sent a video out explaining how you should all sack yourselves, so if you just followed that blindly, then uh, you won't even be watching this video anymore. Hopefully, you haven't fired yourself just yet. We're going to explain this in a bit more detail, because we had a chat, and you thought sacking was a bit too Yeah, strong. I thought sacking was a strong word. I, I like to call it planning for your semi-retirement. Honestly. No, sack yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one of the smartest moves in your business. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to go through a few reasons why that is really something that you should always be thinking about. It's such a smart move in business to fire yourself because of the disciplines that come out of that whole process, really. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So we've jotted down yeah. a few reasons yeah. why. So the first reason yep. is if you sack yourself, you can replace yourself with people who can do the job better than you can. Absolutely. So you may be looking for just one person to take over. That's quite common in large mm. companies. You may be able to subdivide what you do, particularly where, and there's quite a bit of technical knowledge around the karting world. Mm. So you may have a lot of stuff that you're just involved in. It may be better to break that role up and get people to do a better job than you can. Mm. So if you still find yourself down in the pit lane occasionally, it may be the time mm. to go and get a top-notch mechanic or train yep. somebody that can do that better than you has the time to dedicate to it. Mm. Because all that time you're sitting working on the go-kart engines, you're certainly not growing your track. No. So it'll give you the opportunity to look at everything you mm. do. Now, I know one go-kart track I speak to often is very good on the numbers. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be strong financially. Mm -hmm. Seems to be strong in a lot of areas, but I know that's mm -hmm. a super strength for him. Others will be very good on the marketing. Some of them will be very good on customer service. I'm pretty sure of that. So you can take these out and get different people to come and do stuff, but actually take it on, own it, do a better job than you, and free up some time for yeah. you personally. I mean, I've heard that, that, that some of the last two jobs you should give up mm -hmm. are sales and marketing. Now, that's worked for me yep. because actually I'm quite good at those two jobs. Yeah, but yeah. for others, you know, marketing mightn't be their thing. So <laughs> that might be a good job to give up. Yeah, so well, so the last thing I, uh, in fact, and I'll let you into a little secret, I'd never let, ever let go of the sales. No, well, I mean, you know, most track owners are probably quite good at selling, whether they know it or not. But yep. they've, they've done it from day one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've done it from day one. Yeah, I was right. at the coalface. I, well, I was one of those. In, in the early days, I was the guy on the phone calling up the customers. Okay, I still call up customers and have chats with them. You do? But it's not my nine-to-five job. Yeah, but I've seen you walk through the offices and you know all the names of everybody and like you see stuff and you see some of the orders going through and you often turn around to the salespeople and say, ah, oh, you know, was that... John's mm. still there, is Joanne mm. still buying this, Lisa mm. doing that, is Fred doing that one? Mm. And you just know everything. You mm. really have got your finger on the pulse for your sales. So that really is the last thing you ever let go. Yeah. If you ever meet a CEO that has let go of sales, they're either in a struggling company or they're doing extremely well. It's quite, that's the big decider there. Mm. But yeah, sales is the last thing you ever let go of. So let go of, you can start wherever you want, really. Numbers tends to be an area that's not really fully understood. I can do it. I've got software that helps me with my business. Mm. I've got an accountant. I've got a really blooming good bookkeeper, mm. right? And I pay, uh, I think, a bit more than the market rate. If she's watching this, she'll no doubt comment under the video <laughs> and tell me I'm completely wrong. <laughs> but I'm really, really happy that we're, like, we're working together because she's so bloody good. And it's just one of those things, I, I don't really want to get involved in the money. It's there and it just ticks over in the background and she keeps me on the straight and narrow mm. while I just go and run off and be creative and have some fun. <laughs> now, I, I, ironically, I do work with quite a few of my clients on their finances. So I sit in the cash flow meetings and do the projections and the, the year ends and the month ends. And, the, you know, we have those conversations, but it's one of those jobs that really needs that task that you can give out very quickly. So I'd probably start there. Yeah. And that'd be a nice, simple one just to get into the flow and the idea that you can start replacing I, I, everything I mean, you, do. you You always look at the, uh, the, 
So the jobs that you do as a track owner, that are the low skilled and low paid jobs, mm -hmm. you, you know. So if you can pay it a ten or an hour to get someone else to do it, then you should be getting it off your chair, off your plate. So mechanics is a good one. So you can get a you can get a very good mechanic for ten pound an hour. I bet. Yeah, yeah. Well, cleaning yeah. is the other one. Cleaning. So if you find yourself cleaning mm. it around the track, mm. get somebody in, get them to clean. Yeah. Even getting the phone answered sometimes. It depends who's answering your phone and how it operates yeah. at your track. But if you're missing mm. calls, and I know most of you are, just well, that, um, like, they'll yeah, all say yeah. you're not, but I know you're not because like I listen into some of the sales calls because we have it all no. recorded and I see lots of calls that get unanswered. No. Two hotels in Birmingham have just lost £20,000 because they didn't answer their phone. That's it. We've been on the phones today, mm. haven't we? Trying to yeah. sort that out. And they just couldn't be bothered to pick a phone up in the events department no. for £20,000 sales. I, I, one, I left a message yesterday, hasn't called me back. Yeah. And that was, the, that was the hotel we wanted to do it at. Yep. Right? And the second one, I finally got them. I left a message. They didn't respond. Yeah. And they said they were responding two hours. So two hours later, I called up again. And then they told me they wanted me to wait a week for a quote. Oh. And I said, you know what, don't worry. I picked up the third one, and a lovely girl called Lisa answered the phone and has reassured me that I'll have a quote in my inbox by 5 p.m. Cool. Well, She'll I'm, get the business. Secretly, I'm hoping mm. she gets the business because mm. I really like that hotel. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I like it better than the first one. But there we go. That's mm. by the by. Mm. Right. Next. Se second point. Yeah. So, right, once you start to give up tasks, right, maybe not on day one when it's maybe the cleaning or something, mm. unless somebody wants to clean, but staff suddenly can start to see that the progression can be made. And as you start to actually transfer most of what you're doing, you'll start to get staff coming forward asking if they can get involved in stuff and they'll see it as a more of a career progression. And all of a sudden, your business becomes mm. somewhere where they can actually get career progression. And that will hopefully keep them mm. closer to you for longer. Yeah. So attrition on uh, in any business typically hovers around about 12%, 13%, something mm. like that. Maybe 15%. But it'll be higher mm. or lower in different com companies and different parts of the world. You're typically looking, your staff are replacing every eight years, on, on, mm. you know, roughly. But... They'll stay for longer yeah. if they think there's a future for them. I, I, I mean, you, you know, it's there's. we did a restructure about four or five years ago now and started to to put some layers of management in between me and everyone else. Yeah. And that has really changed, you, you know, the, the atmosphere of, of the place. I mean, you've got Tim, who was our marketing bod. Yeah. He's now general manager. Yeah, yeah. You know, Tills, who used to be the warehouse supervisor many moons ago, yeah. he left us, got skilled up. Now he's running the warehouse. He's more of a logistics warehouse purchasing role. Yeah. We've got Kim, who, who who works out there as warehouse supervisor. You know, she's already told Tilly, I want your job. I want warehouse managers. And she said you, that in the yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons we employ them. You've got people saying that I want that job. Yeah, yeah. So and it gives them meaning. That's right. They, well, they start to ask mm -hmm. for more and more responsibility, mm -hmm. which is what you want people mm -hmm. coming to you, saying, I've seen this. Can I do mm -hmm. this for you? It's a fantastic place to, mm -hmm. to, to be because all of a sudden you can now start to think about what you can mm -hmm. get off the desk. Mm -hmm. So the acronym that I always use is EAT. So, yeah, you go. You've remembered, haven't you? Because <laughs> yes. you know this acronym. Yes. So EAT stands for Eliminate, Automate, Transfer. So what I'm always looking mm. to do in businesses is look at what the business owner typically, that's who I'm working with, or sometimes it's boardrooms, but typically business mm. owner. I'm looking at what they're doing and I'm looking at stuff that they can eliminate completely. Why are you mm. doing that is a good question. Mm. Automate is, why are you typing all that out again? You can automate yeah. that. There's, uh, there's a button here on a bit of software that will just duplicate it for you. Mm. Or well, the other one is transfer it out to somebody else. Mm. That could be internally in your company, could be external. So mm. that's the other thing is don't always look inside your company to transfer things out. Yeah. I, I mean, when we started these videos, mm -hmm. I was the mug that was edit editing them. And <laughs> it, it was killing my weekend. I'd forgotten that. 
right. Um, and then what did I say? Uh, to we're you? on the brink of divorce. Because <laughs> because all I was doing was editing videos on the weekend and, and dropping in captions. Now, can I just point out for the video because you said we were on the brink of divorce. That's not we're not, not married. <laughs> we tried it, didn't work. No, no, that, I'm joking. That, that's that's Lauren. <laughs> no, that's I, uh, <laughs> Deb's. I wasn't mm -hmm. kissing Simon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Lauren was. <laughs> Laura was losing the world to live as all the weekends were eaten up. Mm. You made a comment actually, was it here? And I went, why are you editing the videos? And I found somebody mm. online really quickly. Yeah. And then we had a brief chat with her. Mm. We like her a lot. We have to say that, she's editing this video. Yeah. <laughs> Big shout out to Josie. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't touch that anymore. And mm. it's a fantastic, like it was just taking up too much time. Yeah. And, and there's other people that enjoy doing that, do it better than us. Oh, that's absolutely. The, and that's the thing, isn't it? A lot of the stuff you're doing, there's people do it better than you. Mm. Mm. So your bookkeeping, you like my bookkeeper can just rattle off invoices and reconcile mm. bank accounts faster than yeah. I can blink. I can do it. It takes me about mm. 40, 50 yeah. minutes. She does that in yeah. about 10. Next point. Yes. So being, being able to sack yourself or go into semi-retirement mm -hmm. gives you more time to work on your business rather than your business. Yeah. So you can grow it. Yeah, absolutely. The painful truth is that you can be really, really busy and be completely inefficient and ineffective. You're inefficient because you're not as good as the people mm. at the jobs you're doing, right? Mm. So you're kidding yourself. Mm. It's going to be a tough, no holds barred video today. So that's completely inefficient. And then you, not only that, you're ineffective. You come out of work that day going, oh, I've done a great day's work because I did something. Mm. But your job as the business owner is just to grow that business. Mm. So you might have been busy cleaning up, running the bar. Mm -hmm. sorting out in the pits and making sure that everything was running you haven't grown mm -hmm. your business that day no. you've just kept it ticking over so as soon as you can make that move to working on your business you become immensely more valuable so the amount of money that you're worth per hour suddenly just goes mm -hmm. through the roof and so many people don't get this point really but if you're just sitting there mm -hmm. and you're cleaning I mean, it's a very noble job but that's a £10 an hour job. If you are suddenly working out ways to go and bring, I don't know, the next £10,000 or dollars into mm. your track over Christmas, and you do that in two or three hours, you suddenly now, you've created a role that's $3,000, $3,000 an hour. Mm. So what are you actually spending your time on? And what's the true value of that? Mm. And the true value in that is when you're working on it, the bits that grow it, not in it, just delivering the contractual stuff. Mm. So you've got to make that jump. I mean, look, we've got a cleaner here, mm -hmm. cleans the offices, 40 quid a week, I think it is. Yep. Right, now, if if I did it, oh God, it'd take me a good four or five hours. Yep. Right, and you know, you sit there and you ask yourself, how many emails, marketing emails, could you write in four or five hours? Oh, Christ. Well, Christ, we could probably plan a whole campaign for uh, Dortmund. Which is now Birmingham. Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> we could swap the whole like casting spectacular in Dortmund to Birmingham in twenty five hours, I reckon. We well, we could have done it quicker if someone would answer the phone at these bloody hotels. <laughs> <laughs> So if you're watching this video, I hope you're coming to Birmingham to the mm. Karting Spectacular because it's going to be absolutely amazing. But we changed the venue and got everything shifted over inside of 25 hours. Yeah. So I don't know what that's worth to the company long term and we won't you know, be too crass to talk about figures. Mm. We may discuss some of that in the Spectacular if, if it's of interest to you. But that one day of effort is worth a lot, a lot of revenue. But more than that, the goodwill of the people that are coming. So it'd just be immense. Mm. That would be really smart working on it, not in it. Mm. So that's, a, that's the ultimate description of that. You know, then the next point, have you got a job <laughs> or are you building a business? Absolutely. I know for a fact that you did not set your go-kart track up to have a job you probably set your business up and at some moment allowed yourself to start thinking about the car you'd have, the the holidays you'd mm. have, seeing the kids at sports day mm. or whatever it is for you, it probably wasn't you visiting yourself, sitting behind the reception desk, waiting for people to come up and have a go in your go-karts. No. So the next question then is, so if you're working in your business and you're not letting people take over and you're not getting rid of these, when are you exactly going to start living this business lifestyle that you'd uh, envisaged when you set up in business? Yeah, I, I, I mean... You know, so many people do this, and I was guilty of this. 
up until <laughs> just before we met, really. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's it's just silly because your business is unsaleable. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, it's just a job for you if you haven't got the structures and the processes and everything in place and documented and all of this, if it's all in your head, mm -hmm. it's a job. Well, that's right. And you've touched mm -hmm. upon something there, which is the uh, selling the business. Mm -hmm. You should always set your business up for sale, even if you don't want to. No. It's worth repeating. You should mm -hmm. always set your business up for sale, even if you've never thought about selling your business. Because mm -hmm. the disciplines of getting to that point in your company are so valuable to the business itself. Well, it makes the business run much smoother mm -hmm. and everybody knows what they're meant to be doing. Yep. And as a result, you get a better result. Yep. Well, you increase efficiencies, mm -hmm. you get more effective again. Mm -hmm. The great news is, is when people come and work for you as well and they start to get involved and you'll see the newcomers, they will sit down and start to think, well, there's a bit of substance here. Mm -hmm. And it's the difference between having a proper business. <laughs> is everything documented? Mm. Do we know what's going on? Is, it, is the same process pretty much followed? And a lot of people will maybe be feeling like, oh, that's terrible. You've just now confined me to a narrow. But it doesn't. It actually frees you up to start thinking more creatively. Yeah, yeah sure. It's a bloody task to get it down on paper. Oh, it's not you easy. Know, and we haven't finished. Yeah, yeah. But we've made a start. Yep. We're making progress. Yep. And, you know, and, and having it written down and all that gives us the ability to tweak it too. It provokes and promotes questioning within mm. the business, doesn't it? And when yeah. somebody comes up and says, well, I'm writing this bit of the manual, or I've noticed mm. this is happening, how do we do this again? And somebody says, well, we do this, and somebody else says, actually, we do it this way. You're like, hang on a minute. Like, whoa, are we doing mm. this two different ways? Is this why we've had a problem mm. in the past? So just that whole process yeah. of just being allowed to rethink parts of your business mm. and remodel it is mm. a fantastic opportunity mm. to do that. At some point, you're going to want to, want to exit your business, mm -hmm. right? Whether it be selling it, yeah. whether it be retiring or passing it on mm -hmm. to a family member. Yep. If this is going to happen and it's going to happen, mm -hmm. you need to plan for it. And, yeah. it, and it's not it's not a 90 day plan <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a year plan this is probably going to take not three to five years but well, it is interesting you know, when I was playing golf recently that's not the interesting bit um, one of the guys I was playing you play golf, golf with, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could talk you through the round but no the interesting thing was that the guy I was playing golf with he sells, <coughs> sells business he's a business broker <laughs> And we got into some conversation and I was talking about exit and why it's a really smart idea and some of the sort of interesting bits that we found interesting between us. And I said, you know, typically it's a three-year plan, isn't it? And he turned around and he went, no, it's a five-year plan. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. No, I think it's just because I work harder than him, but... <laughs> and I kick my ass when he sees it in the golf thing, he watches these videos. <laughs> no, but he's talking five-year strategy and I'm talking three-year. And quite often I meet business owners who say, right, can you come and help me through this next bit of my business? Yeah, what are we doing? I'm looking to sell it at the end of next year. And I just look right. at them going, uh, right, here we go. But you can't just say that. So I normally ask a few questions and then we get a little bit deeper. And after a couple of weeks, they go, we're not going to sell next year, are we? No. Now, the difficult bit when that happens is the business owner that's got in their head that they just, they've worked, I don't know, 30 years in the business. <laughs> they've put their all in. They're knackered. They just want to go and sort of, you know, enjoy their retirements. And they've been working in it, not on it. Mm. Then sitting down with them and explaining that, yes, we're going to get to the end of next year and then there's going to be another 24 months of this. Three years sounds like a bloody long way away. Yeah. Now, we all know we're in business. That flies by in the blink of an eye. But at the moment where you're thinking you, you're nearly out of this, crikey, that is, uh, that's a real kidney punch, that is. Yeah. And that is tough to take. You should always have your business in a state where it's ready to be sold. And then, that, I mean, it would be different in different countries, but mm. if you're in the UK, you've got some called Entrepreneur's Taper Relief. So you're only, pay, you're only paying 10% tax on that. So it's super tax efficient to go and sell businesses in the UK. So that's great because you don't quite need as much money as you thought you'd need for your business mm. to go and get the same amount. Typically what happens though is you do get that amount of money mm. and you suddenly find you've got more cash available. But if you've 
done the bit where you've got out the business completely, where it's all documented, where you've been working on it, and you show them how gross can be made. Your one, your two, your three, your four, your five times multiplier mm. of uh, EBITDA or revenue, or whatever way they measure it in your country, suddenly becomes your six, seven, eight, ten times mm. EBITDA and revenue because it's a turnkey solution. And when you can suddenly sell that to anybody and the manual's here and the keys mm. are ready, anybody can buy your business mm. now. So suddenly your market gets wider. Simple economics. More supply, more demand. <laughs> no, absolutely. Not, it's not more supply, is it? There's one supply, but mm. there's more demand. Mm. Price goes up. Yeah. So smart, smart thinking. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely, and I mean the you know the technical side of go karting, the the carts and the engines and things like that. The, the number of people who just shrug their shoulders and go, oh, engines, go kart parts, oh, that's a bit technical for me. I'm not interested in you know. They need to be. They need to get you know. But if it's all documented, understand, and I mean, we've just set out to we've been we've been doing training exercise. Yeah. So we run it and then we get to the end of it. We do training once a week for 20 minutes. Yep. And then we go through everything and then we circle back around. Well, I've just made the decision to either half a day or a day a week, we're going to video cool. a series of training things and then just release them gradually. So eventually we're going to have a catalogue. Yeah training them about all the different parts we do. And how it all fits together. And how it all fits together. And how it differs in different carts. That would be and hugely valuable. You, 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 <laughs> you know, this is immensely valuable because all of a sudden, the knowledge yeah. that's in my head is now... Accessible. ...in a knowledge base and everybody can get access to it. So if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, <laughs> not a problem. Very interesting. Mm. When you say you've just made the decision, is this the team now finding out via video that we've no, just no, made no, the no. decision? Well, <laughs> I'm well, yeah, well, well the team is probably just finding out about our video. <laughs> I better run downstairs <laughs> after this and tell them. But no, I, I've sat down with Aaron. Yeah, yeah. Aaron's one of my sales guys, and sort of like um, you know, Aaron, myself, and Tilly, Christian, the warehouse guy, because he's very, you know, he works on his bikes and that. He's very mechanically knowledge, knowledgeable. Aaron works on his car. I just look at a lot of exploded diagrams and have, <laughs> <laughs> and, and have been around more carts than I, I care to imagine. We're going to present these things. So cool. we all know. The guys don't. <laughs> we'll spring that on them. <laughs> what do you mean? Hopefully they're watching this video. <laughs> they'll now know. Uh -uh. So, yeah. Cool. So a few things to be thinking about, really. So you should be sacking yourself. It's not semi-retirement. You should be a bit tough on yourself. If you're wondering where to start, we're giving you a couple of pointers, but if you've already done those, what next? And then there's always a little bit of um, a chasm that has to be crossed normally. Yeah. There's always something that's like, well, nobody would ever be able to do this. And um, that's just not true. If that were true, NASA would never get a rocket into the sky. Um, so we can do that. We can do that for your business. Mm. So um, if you're struggling with anything, but you like the idea that, you know, this is a smart way forward and it really is, reach out and have a chat. Mm. Or even better, come to Birmingham. This karting spectacular is in Birmingham, mm. January 13th to 16th. Yeah. And really? now looks like I'm organising a road trip to go and visit karting venues in the area for all of the international attendees. Yeah, it's sort of, we'd have always wished to be in Dortmund, I think, but the fact mm. that it hasn't happened was a bit of a blow for a few hours. And mm. then as we've got into it, it's actually been one of the smartest, best moves for oh. a while because we're here in the UK. We know a lot of go-kart track owners mm. in the UK. It's enabled us to go and add a bit more to the itinerary. Mm. I think it's going to be hugely useful because I know some of the tracks we're mm. going to. Yeah. And I just think that will be time well spent. Yeah, and... It, it seems to me that Birmingham is a little bit easier to get to than Dortmund. Definitely. So that was poor, causing a lot of trouble for some of our attendees. You know, one guy, guys up in Scotland were travelling seven hours. Seven hours? Because there's no direct flight, no. Oh, okay. Now, now, a direct flight would what be two? Two and a half, maybe, to Scotland? Something like that. Oh, anyway. It wouldn't be far. <laughs> but seven. Now they can have a nine hour journey mm. down to Birmingham. Good. There was three of them coming, so I've saved them <laughs> 60 hours. <laughs> oh, 
we'll maybe save that for another video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, probably a good place to stop this one. Yeah, I think it, it, it's it's bound to mm. promote and provoke uh, questions. If you've got anything that's running through mm. your head, either type it in the comments below. Mm. If it's a bit too personal, do what others have done. Mm. And e email into yeah. us. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk one on one. And and just remember, this isn't a quick fire. It will be a slow fire. <laughs> <laughs> a slow burn. <laughs> yes. Mm. Got to get things put into place so you can sack yourself. Yeah. I look forward to you being sacked. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, well, that's goodbye from me. Cheerio from me. And we'll see you next week. I look forward to it. See you soon. Ciao.